Section 12.1, Tangent Lines. A circle is a set of all points in a plane equal distant to a given point known as the center. Circles are labeled by their center. Therefore, in this diagram, I have circle P because the center of the circle is point P. In the diagram, I have a radius. A radius is a segment from the center of a circle to a point on the circle. Here, AP is a radius. PC is a radius, and PB is a radius. BC is a diameter of the circle. That is a segment that has its endpoints on the circle, but also runs through the center. And recall, from previous sections, we know that the diameter is double the length of the radius, or the radius is half the diameter. A tangent line to a circle is a line in the plane of a circle that intersects the circle in exactly one point. Here. I have line AB. It is intersecting circle P at one point, and that point is point A. Point A is known as the point of tangency. The point of tangency is the point where the tangent line and the circle intersect. Here I can identify this line, line AB, as a tangent line, or ray AB as a tangent ray, or segment AB, which is a tangent segment. Theorem 12.1. If a line is tangent to a circle, then the line is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of tangency. In the diagram, I have circle P. I have line TA being tangent to circle P. I have point T being the point of tangency. That's the intersection of the line and the circle. PT is drawn to the point of tangency. Therefore, from the theorem 12.1, I know that PT must be perpendicular to the tangent line TA. On this example, we want to assume the lines are tangent in the diagram. And P is the center. Find the value of X. In this situation, I know that this segment is a tangent line. This is a radius. And a radius drawn to the point of tangency creates a perpendicular segments between the tangent line and our radius. Therefore, I'm given a right triangle. And I can use the triangle sum theorem to find the value of X. In this case, I have 90 plus 38 is going to equal 128. 128 from 180 is going to be 52 degrees. On my next diagram, again, I have a diameter drawn to a tangent line. Again, from theorem 12.1, I know that a radius drawn to the point of tangency, or in this case, a diameter drawn to the point of tangency, creates perpendicular segments. That generates a right triangle in my diagram. Again, by the triangle sum theorem, I can find the value of x. 90 plus 46 is equal to 136. And 136 from 180 is going to equal 44 degrees. From the previous directions, I know that I can assume that these two segments are tangent to circle P. And we know from theorem 12.1 that the radius that intersects the point of tangency is perpendicular to the tangent line. Therefore, this generates two right angles inside of my quadrilateral. And I also know that a quadrilateral angle sums are 360 degrees. And I know three of the angles. Therefore, I can find the value of x equal to 360 minus the sum of my three known angles, 90 plus 90 plus 140 degrees. And when I simplify this expression, I'm going to get x equal to 40 degrees. In this diagram, I can assume that this line is tangent to circle P. Therefore, I know the radius and that tangent line generate perpendicular segments. Therefore, I know that this is a right angle. But I need to find some more information prior to putting that right angle into the diagram. Here, I have two radii in my circle. I know that they are congruent. All radii in a circle are congruent. Therefore, if I just look at this triangle, that's an isosceles triangle. Since this is 65 degrees, this angle must be 65 degrees. Therefore, I can find the measure of this angle by the triangle sum theorem. 65 plus 65 is 130. Therefore, this angle must be 50 degrees. Now I can go back to theorem 12.1, stating that a radii to a point of tangency creates 
perpendicular segments between the radius and that tangent line. Therefore, that is a right angle. Now, I can use the measure of 50 degrees, the right angle, to find the value of x by the triangle sum theorem. Therefore, I know x equals 90 plus 50 is 140, and 140 from 180 leaves me 40 degrees. Theorem 12.2. If a line in the plane of a circle is perpendicular to a radius at its endpoint on the circle, then the line is tangent to the circle. That's the converse of theorem 12.1. Here, I'm given a line, and it intersects the endpoint of my radius. If the radius and that line generate a right angle, then I know that that line, which here is ML, is a tangent line to the circle, and point L would be the point of tangency. To do that, all I need to do is perform the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Therefore, I use the legs 9 and 12, which gives me a squared plus b squared. And I want to know, if, does that equal c squared, or the length of the longest segment of my triangle, which here would be pn? So I substitute in the values, 3 squared plus 4 squared, wondering if that equals 5 squared. Gives me 9 plus 16, which is 25. And when I simplify, 25 equals 25. Therefore, I know that this generates a right triangle, and that is a right angle. That tells me that PL is the radius, and that intersects the point of tangency to a tangent line. Therefore, ML is a tangent line. Here, we want to determine whether the line is a tangent line in each diagram. And all I need to do is actually perform the Pythagorean theorem on each one of these triangles and to determine if a squared plus b squared does equal c squared. And if it does, that gives me a right angle, and that generates a tangent line to the point of tangency to the radius. So here I have a squared, which is going to be 10 squared, plus b squared, which is 7 squared. And I want to determine, does that equal 12 squared? This is going to give me 100 plus 49, and that's going to give me 144. And when I simplify, that's 149 and 144, and they are not equal. Therefore, ML is not a tangent line. Next, I want to go to this diagram. I'm given another radii and a line that assumes to be a tangent to the circle. We have to verify that by the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared, which is 10 squared plus 24 squared. And I want to determine, does that equal the longest segment in the triangle, which is 26 squared? And when I simplify this, this is going to give me 100 plus 24 squared, which is 576. And 26 squared is 676. When I simplify, that's going to give me 676, 676. Therefore, I know that they are equal. And that tells me that ML is a tangent line to the circle. In the diagram, the circle is inscribed in a triangle, or the triangle is circumscribed about the circle. In other words, the sides of the triangle are tangent to the circle. So each side is tangent to the circle, and each side intersects the circle at one point, therefore, at a point of tangency. From the previous slide, that gives us theorem 12.3. Two segments tangent to the circle from a point outside the circle are congruent. Here I have circle P. I have two segments, R, Q, and R, S, that are tangent to circle P. The point of tangency is our point Q and S. R is the point that is outside the circle. When two tangent lines from that point outside the circle are tangent to the same circle, 
that means that those two segments are going to be congruent. Therefore, QR is congruent to SR. For example, if this was 5 centimeters, I would know that RS is 5 centimeters. And we can perform examples and calculate measures of tangent lines based on that information. On this slide, they want us to find the perimeter of each polygon circumscribed about a circle. From the previous theorem, I know that since this is 4 inches, from that point outside the circle to the point of tangency, these two segments must be congruent, or two tangent lines must be congruent, which are 4 inches. Since this is from a point outside the circle to the point of tangency, those two tangent segments are going to be congruent, 5 inches and 5 inches. And again, from that point outside the circle to the point of tangency, those two tangent segments must be congruent, therefore 12 inches and 12 inches. Now, to find the perimeter, I just need to find the sum of all the measures of the segments. Therefore, 4 plus 12 is 16. 16 and 12 is going to equal 28. 28 and 5 is 33. Plus 5 is 38. Plus 4 is going to give me 42 inches for the perimeter. Again, in this diagram, they want us to find the perimeter of the polygon circumscribed about the circle. In this diagram, 18 meters represents the segment length of the tangent segment, not to the point of tangency, but to the whole side of the polygon. Again, 12 meters represents the whole side of the polygon, not from the exterior point of the circle to the point of tangency, and the same for 6 meters. But 4 meters is from the point of tangency to the point on the outside of the circle. So I need to find out what each measure from the point to the point of tangency is. To do that, I know that this is 4 meters, therefore that is 4 meters. And if this is 4 meters, the entire segment is 6 meters. That leaves this segment to equal 2 meters. And if this segment is 2 meters, I know that's congruent to this segment, and I know that that is 2 meters. But the entire segment is 12 meters. Therefore, I know from the point of tangency to this exterior point must be 12 minus 2, or 10 meters. And if this is 10 meters, it is congruent to that segment, which is also 10 meters. The entire length of this side is 18. 18 minus 10 leaves me this segment equal to 8 meters. Now I know that this must be 8 meters because from the point outside the circle to the point of tangency, these two tangent segments must be congruent. I can find the perimeter by finding the sum of all four sides of my polygon. Here, I know that this is 12 meters plus 6 meters plus 12 meters plus 18 meters. Then, I just find their sum. 12 plus 6 is 18. 18 and 12 is going to be 30. 30 and 18 is 48 meters. If the lines are tangent to circle P in the diagram, find the value of x. Since PL intersects the tangent line at the point of tangency, I know that PL and ML are perpendicular. Therefore, this generates a right triangle. Now, all I need to do is perform the Pythagorean theorem. My two legs, 9 squared plus 14 squared equals the hypotenuse, which is x squared. 9 squared plus 14 squared is going to give me 277. That equals x squared. When I take the square root of both sides, x is going to equal 16.6. In the next diagram, again, I know that I have a right triangle because the radius is intersecting the point of tangency of my tangent line. Now all I need to do is use the Pythagorean theorem, my legs, x squared plus 12 squared equals the hypotenuse. And here, my hypotenuse is x plus 7. And that will give me x plus 7 squared. That gives me x squared plus 144 equals x plus 7 times x plus 7. And recall from algebra we need to FOIL first, outer, inner, and then last. 
and then simplify. When I do that, that gives me x squared plus 144 equals x squared plus 14x plus 49. The x squares will cancel out, subtract 49 on both sides, and when I do, I get 95 equals 14x. And when I divide both sides by 14, I'm going to get x equal to 6.8. Given AE and AB are tangent to circle K, and AD and AC are tangent to circle P, we want to determine if segment ED is congruent to segment BC. Here's a quick proof. Number one, we know that AC is equal to AD, and AE is congruent to AB. That's given. Now, all we need to do is say by the segment addition postulate that segment AC is equal to AB plus BC, and AD is equal to AE plus ED. Then, since I know that AC and AD are equal, I can set their quantities equal. AB plus BC equals AE plus ED, but I know that AE and AB are equal. Therefore, if I subtract that from both sides, I end up with BC equal to ED. Here we want to determine the distance between the two centers of the circles. We know that if a radii intersects the points of tangency, that makes the radius perpendicular to the tangent line. Therefore, I know I have two right angles. If I would create a segment between the center of circle K to a point on the radii of circle P, I can generate a rectangle. I know that these two segments would be congruent. Therefore, I know that I have a right angle here because of corresponding angles. Now, I can generate segment KP, which will be the hypotenuse of this right triangle. I know that BC is 20, but since this is a rectangle, this would be 20. And I know that KB is 3, so the distance on the radii of PC has to be 3 meters. That leaves me this segment equal to 15 meters. Now, I would just use the Pythagorean theorem, which would be 15 squared plus 20 squared equals kp squared. That would give me 225 plus 400. That equals kp squared. That gives me 625 equals kp squared. The square root of kp and 625 gives me kp equal to 25 meters.